Hey guys, uh, this is Lucid, and uh, we have a new patch out for Dominions, uh, patch 5.41. So I'm going to cover uh, a bit of what is in the patch in this video, and there is a lot of cool new stuff, so uh, I hope you're really excited about it. Uh, I am. So there's a new nation, uh, Vettiheim. This is basically a Vetti, you know, like the little goblin folk nation uh, from kind of the Jotunheim clan if you will uh also niflheim jotunheim and utgard have been updated uh there's new heroes for jotunheim and utgard i haven't figured out what these ones are um we're gonna pull up the game in a second and then i will go through uh, some of the new stuff um you get summoned dwarves of the four directions and uh winter's call i haven't seen winter's call yet i will have to look at that in game and then uh summon uh rimvedi and also we have uh, Illwinter now enables a limited recruitment of Nephil Giants and all forts. Uh, and I think this is the, the blue sacreds, not the Nephil Jarls, right? So anyway, just the troop, which in my opinion, of limited utility uh, because the Giants kind of phase out in value a bit towards like the end of the game like it's better to have gear on thugs like you're gonna be gold constrained especially if you're dropping ill winter and other things but pumping out scrotty and blood hunting you're not gonna have money to spend on needful giants all game i think from every fort um it seems they have finally fixed ill winter uh i kind of want to test it the way ill winter is supposed to work is it's whoops um the way it is supposed to work is it has like a ramp up time. So it gets cast and then every turn it gets more and more intense. And I, f I forget exactly the rate. We can look at it in game. Uh, we'll do it right now, actually. We'll start flipping back and forth. Um, got my little test game pulled up. So if we look at ill winner. Uh, yeah, it's going to cause unrest everywhere. Yeah, and then plus one cold for every four months. So it's supposed to slowly ramp up rather than just immediately set everything to cold three. Uh, which, it's completely unbalanced how it was. It's really, really unfair, I guess, to have to play against that. But anyway, it, it, is, it seems it's been fixed. If, if this is how it is, I'm actually okay with it because basically what's going to happen is it's going to put pressure on people to kill you because there's no real other way to take down ill winter um before it ramps up to cold minus three because it's going to take a while so i like this a lot better whereas before you could kind of just drop it and everybody was immediately kind of screwed so anyway massive uh improvement if this actually got fixed and works as uh as indicated um okay moose rider riders uh, leave behind a rider when the moose dies i'm not exactly sure how that works but let's take a look well we won't be able to see on this nation but uh presumably you get like a little crappy dude when the big dude dies i'm not totally sure how that works we'll, f we'll figure out oh there's a longer list we have to click on it to actually see all these things so uh hang tight here okay more nordic names cursed tablet uh, I forget who cast it. This might be a Jotunheim-esque spell. I think... Yeah, I think it is. Uh, it's basically a remote curse. Uh, so now you can resist it. So I guess targeting pretender gods and stuff is no longer a guaranteed way to curse. Uh, new pretender gods. Uh, we'll have to look at these. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and find them. It's going to be a little tricky. Uh, Great Archon, King in Yellow, and Serpent of the Underworld, and Demiurge. So... Let's see if we can find them on Late Age, like Late Age Marignan or something. I feel like this might have some of them. L.A. Marignan. Do we see anything new? This looks very new. Great Archon. The hell? Well, I'm glad Serpent Legs are seeing some more use. Interesting freaking chassis. Shield of Wisdom.
What a strange monster. Interesting. Uh, do we see any more here? Demurge, this is the other new one. See, I just know which nation to click on. Like, Archon, I'm like, okay, Marignan's gonna have that. Um, okay, interesting. All and region and Earth Astral. I actually like this. Very, very good cross path. And then can probably expand pretty well. Yeah, I'm feeling this is probably a very solid uh, expander. It's going to be cheaper than some of the expensive ones, like a, a Dracon, but it's going to be... Well, I guess it's the same price as a Thricehorn Boar. A Thricehorn Boar definitely still has a place, but I feel like this guy is going to be pretty gnarly. I could see picking him. Uh, Serpent of the Underworld. Interesting. So this this one, Nation appears to have most of them. Uh, okay, so Antlers and a Tail Sweep, and then Earth, Death, and Recuperation. Like, do every, does everybody have? No. Uh, okay, did we miss any of them? King in yellow. I don't see a king in yellow. I feel like king in yellow is a, like a, a death flavored thing. Uh, let's see if we can find it here. We'll pick Scalaria. There's a chance Scalaria might have it. We'll do one more try, and otherwise you're going to have to kind of uh, explore on your own. Let's try... I don't think Niflheim's going to have it, but we'll, we'll, we'll click on them and just make sure. Okay, we'll do one more, because there's not many options here. Okay, let's try an African-flavored one, like Machaka. I don't see a king in yellow. So you'll have to figure that one out on your own. But... Uh, anyway, cool new Pretender chassis, always welcome. New unit uh, for Late Age Marignan, the Plague Doctor. I haven't actually seen this one yet. Let's look it up. Um, but I have explored all of the new nations, so I'll talk about them briefly. Uh, okay, Late Age Marignan. So they got... That looks like a Plague Doctor. Okay, Plague Doctor 3. This unit is capable of creating plagues while hidden in enemies' provinces. Oh my gosh. Disease Healer. Stealthy and Plague Doctor. Oh, gosh. That's actually pretty interesting. So I'm guessing if people are trying to storm your forts, you can now pop out some plague doctors and have them cause plague events. I guess these guys are kind of like a Bane Venom charm in a way. Oh, man. Interesting. Interesting. We'll have to... I, I'm not exactly sure. It seems like it's a skill you can use every turn like it's not a passive ability it doesn't look like we'll actually have to see how that works uh new twice born chassis i've seen some of these the twice born ritual also got reworked so it's now size dependent the way this works now it used to be it was 10 10 death gems um what happens now is it is five death gems times the size of the mage casting it at least that's my understanding from testing it so what does this mean it means if you're like a size one guy, you now can do it for five death gems, which is super cheap. So that's pretty interesting. If you're a size two, it's basically no change. If you're size six, though, it becomes very expensive. It's 30 death gems. But you get a badass chassis. Like, you basically become a Tartarian. I think. I'm not sure all the... The ones I've tested, like the Neeful Jarls, is what I tested because I was just messing around with the Jotunheim nations. Uh, yeah, they turn into big, badass motherfuckers. But I think this is actually good because Twiceborn... It used to... Twiceborn's gone through a lot of changes. It used to be in, like, Dominions 3-4, you 
you could you could never friendly suicide like you had to actually kill you couldn't do like an underwater suicide it was kind of hard to to pull off and they had to be in friendly dominion there were like all these constraints that made it really hard to use well now it's pretty easy to use which is a good thing uh but some of the chassis that they gave were just ridiculous so like the bakamano sorcerers that would get white maged and i mean they would just be nuts so it's interesting i think i like the change because it makes sense i like the change uh i think it makes twice born more viable for smaller units and it also gives you a kind of cool use case for really big units even though it's a nerf overall i would say but it's like a cool nerf um and it's not a strict nerf like there's definitely parts of it that got buffed so it's going to be how this changes is more going to be nation by nation whether you if you have really big mages it's kind of a nerf but sometimes it, like your twice borns you're going to get are going to be more badass so you know it's hard to say but if you have small mages especially like size one death mages i don't even know who has those um those are going to be and those got buffed in a way but you want a small death mage that has like i don't even know what are size one death majors there's like vetty hags i can't think of any more there's not many size one units in the game so i think it's mostly a slight nerf or no change um but some of the chassis are really badass now like basically tarts Okay, option to close windows by clicking outside them. Let's actually check this out here. Like, how does that work? I don't know. Wait, options, preferences. No, that's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, guys, turn that feature on. Okay, I dig that. That's kind of cool. Uh, speed up when selecting commanders with the sail ability. I don't actually know how that works. Icon for summon allies. Cool. It means it'll show up in the unit portrait. Uh, end information, uh, hidden dominion information leakage fixed. Flame Jelly Fire Shield didn't work underwater. I didn't actually know it didn't work underwater, but Flame Jellies were actually still pretty okay. I've had to fight against them a few times, and they did pretty good, but I imagine this made them a lot better underwater. Uh, squad size was not always updated correctly after setting guard commander order. Uh, and then Lumber Constructs got an increased protection. Mikkel and Jaguar Warrior Pretender cost fixed. Uh, new icons for some underwater sites. Contact Jin and Jin Warrior more expensive. I'm playing a Naba game. Feels bad, man. Uh, so these are two Naba nerfs. Uh, and I I haven't used these yet in the game, so I don't really know what to exp like whether they deserve a nerf a nerf a nerf or not. Um, but I guess I should probably get them if people thought that they were nerf worthy. Um, the Naba Lab now only gets a discount in uh, wastes rather than everywhere. Hit locations did not take larger bless into account. Supply did not take larger bless into account. Those are kind of like minor cleanup bugs. Uh, weapon damage no longer kept a 50% on head hits on a being that cannot live without its head, which is most beings. But uh, that basically means like you could get hit in the head and it could save you. Uh, but now you get hit in the head, you die, I think is what it means. But I'm not totally sure how that works, actually. Um... I don't know how impactful the change this is going to be. If you do, put it in the comments. I'm assuming this is kind of like niche, where sometimes a unit would get hit on its head and it would survive before. But sometimes these little things can have a big effect. Uh, unique non-artifacts could be uh, mass-produced on one on one turn fixed. But unique not. Uh-uh. I think this has to do with mod mods. I can't think of any unique non-artifacts. Uh, minor fatigue damage versus immune beings no longer shown in log. 
Um, it's kind of good. It's going to fill up the log less with stuff that doesn't or is impossible to matter. Automatically found sites are now found on turn zero. Crossbow and Arbalist now had or had infinite ammo fixed. So, but this isn't, I think this is not just crossbows and arbalists. The units is basically any weapon or any ranged weapon that had ammunition minus two, which is like takes two, or I forget exactly what the stat is called on it, but I don't have any crossbows here. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so any unit that basically shot once every two rounds uh, or any item, it would have infinite ammo, which was actually pretty useful. Um, and it was great because your guys would keep shooting instead of running into melee and dying. Well, now welcome to the club. Your crossbows are going to run into melee and die too. Um, beam weapons no longer hit the user. Uh, this was actually... I, I can't think of which most units that have a beam weapon, like a fire breath from a dragon, they're immune to fire, so it doesn't really hit them. But some units were not like that. Um, and the beam weapon did hit. And I remember, I, I know I've tinkered around in different mods, and some units would knock the shit out of themselves out with beam weapons because they would always hit themselves. So anyway, that's nice that they fixed that. Uh, fix for battle summonings from retreated units. Battle summoning, a fix for battle summonings from retreated units. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, break siege now lasts the entire turn, also versus random events. Okay, so this actually is pretty interesting. This was a bug that popped up, not bug, feature, whatever you want to call it, weird interaction that popped up in my Micklin game. And if you're trapped on top by an enemy army uh, and you break siege to get out, if something happens in the event phase, uh, you will be unable to interact with it. So, like, let's say the army you were going to fight moved off, or you killed it. I think, like, mostly it just moves off. But then there's an event that happens where, like, indies attack you. You don't get to fight the indies, even though you were breaking a siege. You just are trapped inside your fort. So, uh, and there were very few ways to abuse it. Asphodel has a way that you could have abused it in the past. But anyway, you can no longer abuse that with Asphodel now. It is this is apparently now fixed so that's nice uh, it was possible to keep reanimating supplies when besieged wrong pop-up for supply uh, reanimation most heroes are now unique um this will be interesting multi-heroes like heroes you could get repeated um they were not very common before so i'm not sure which ones got taken out or made into single heroes like i know lanka had a multi-hero it'll be interesting to see which ones still have multi-heroes and Presumably, Worthy Heroes is going to need to get some kind of update um, if they went and changed a lot of the multi-heroes, because like, Worthy Heroes also has multi-heroes. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out. Uh, Kavi Archers are cheaper, good. They were kind of shit. Uh, Zidane's more expensive and minus one attack skill. That's probably fair. Zidane's are pretty strong. Uh, I'm not of like the huge cult that you need to massively nerf sedans but they are very difficult to deal with uh Calum could sometimes get guardian angels from non-priests fixed commander recruitment points are fixed um a new random pretender titles improved spell info for certain combat spells so that's pretty nice it tells you more stuff in the the spell description recruitment grayed out when province has zero resources um this actually is really nice because it's very annoying when you sit there and you try to recruit stuff and you're like, why isn't my commander coming out to build a fort? And oh yeah, it's because I have enough forts around that province that they're pulling all the resources out. So there's zero resources, but still you've got your gold tied up for literally forever waiting for a commander that's never going to come. So anyway, they fixed that. So nice. Uh, Fairy Queen now has iron vulnerability. Uh, that's just in line with all the, the elves that have iron vulnerability. Uh, message when commander dies from old age. Items didn't go to lab when dying from old age due to ritual. I'm not actually sure what that means. Um, this is actually, this is a big one here. Assassination targets now don't care about conservative gym usage. This is awesome that they fixed it. Because it was super annoying because you would want mages to use 
gems and assassination so they don't die. But you also don't want to get gem baited. So you want to have conservative gem use on to avoid gem baiting. Um, and, you know, not even just gem baiting, but like, let's say, yeah, you you have some things scripted, like a big some big battlefield buff you're going to do, and then afterwards you want them to summon fire elementals or, you know, what have you. And so you... Or you don't want them to summon fire elementals because you want... Okay, sorry guys, confusing. Let's say you have battlefield buffs you want to go off. Your battlefield buffs, they go off round one. Round two and three, you don't want to use any more spells because you're worried about gem baits. You're worried about people teleporting in, using all your gems, and you have enough gems for two battles. So you have conservative gem use on, but now because you put conservative gem use on, you traditionally were a victim or a target for assassins, because it would be much easier, like mages without conservative gem or with conservative gem use ticked, would be much more likely to die to assassins. There's still some trade off now, because now if you get assassinated, you will probably use some gems in that assassination, and that may mess up your battle spells. But you're not going to die, and you probably won't use all your gems. I mean, you might, but I mean, if you have like gems for like two or three battles, um, you know, maybe you only use one battle worth of gems and maybe you don't get gem baited too, you know, anyway, very nice. I think there's, in some ways there's no perfect answer because like you can imagine a situation where you get assassinated and the guy, you really don't want to use gems. Like you really just want him to like run up and fight or something else. You don't want him to use gems in an assassination battle. You want him to save the gems for combat. Well, now you don't have that option. So in that way, like, it's not perfect. But when you look at, I think, all of the different time, like, the, the different ways this is going to happen in a game, this is, in my opinion, a much better system. So I think this is really nice. Uh, some battlefield-wide offensive spells will never be cast against few opponents, in order to save gems, especially when on conservative gem usage. So now if you're fighting like 10 guys uh, in the enemy army, and maybe there's some really strong units amongst them, it's not going to do like Wrathful Skies or something uh, and then potentially kill your whole army. So it's going to make certain battlefield... Because you can imagine basically gym baiting an army to kind of kill itself or to hurt itself. And there's some spells that apparently it's going to decide, yeah, not very good to cast like battlefield wipe spells against five guys on the enemy side when I've got like, uh, you know, 300 guys in my army. So that's nice. Uh, which actually I think this is going to be useful in one of my games I'm in. Uh, Huntress is now uh, two points for end. A Perpetual st Storm now has the uh, effect visible in battle. You can now undo alchemy. This is huge. You, you know, alchemy used to be permanent. So what that meant is you alchemized, but then you decided against it. Well, you got to redo your turn from scratch. No more, my friends. No more. Let's actually test that out. Okay, we have 178 air gems. And we have 340, and then wait, did that work? Wait, how does that work? Okay, 176. We go down to 172. I don't think that that's not working. Wait, but that, I think that's what it's talking about. Alchemy. Options, preferences. Redo turn from scratch. No. How do I undo...
Okay, I don't know how to undo alchemy. If you know how to undo alchemy, let me know. Help screen for alchemy. Oh, here we go. Okay, undo is X. Okay, guys, so here's the thing. Watch this. I spend, I turn this in here, right? So I've turned a bunch. Normally, it's already hard committed. There's no way for me to get out of having spent once I click. But now if I hit X, it goes back. But it doesn't go back. I don't think, so let's check. 170, 343. Yeah, okay, it's not like remembering where you were at the beginning of the turn or anything. So it's just a way, you hit X, and it's just a way to get out of... Um, it's just a way to get out of uh, the screen. The other thing that's kind of useful from this screen, you can see the hotkeys here, and basically if you hit um, like F, you're going to do fire or shift F, and you're going to shift fire to astral, so that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, that's the alchemy screen. Arena combatants uh, would refuse to fight when they wore a slave collar. I didn't know that. Uh, Net and web are now separate effects. A possible uh, game freeze fix. Uh, Ghost ship armada wasn't uh, properly removed when the last armada was defeated. I didn't know that. Um, Micklin slave warrior got a stone spear. I don't rem really remember what they had before, but maybe that's good. Uh, Dark vision bless. Um, from sites wasn't shown properly and lord of heathen's tribe so these are some updates to end um no longer restricted to one per province that means you can get more cannibals per province so that's i think pretty important for like a scales uh end play and then um this also that ability also increases unrest so you can now stack them up but you're gonna have more unrest problems um and then the end bishop and viceroy primate now reduce less unrest so it seems it's a bit of a, uh, I don't really know how this works, but it seems it's a bit of an unrest balancing game if you want to go cannibals, because you're going to get unrest from getting them, but then you have to put more here to, to balance it out. Um, and then new random, okay, so there's some new random events added, and then event fixes, etc. Uh, new modding commands... I don't actually know what all these are. And since most of y'all aren't going to read through these, um, these can actually open up. Usually these mod commands, just so y'all know, they're from usually the modding community. So like some of the top modders, they usually have kind of like a little bit of a wish list for Illwinter and then Illwinter will pull off them and put stuff on there. And then sometimes they do just stuff that they think people might like or anything anyway. But uh, just know that this will open up cool stuff for some of the mods. Um, but that is it for reading through the messages. Now let's actually take a look at the nation. So first thing is, uh, you notice they got a major sprite overhaul. Like, this is the Nefil Jarl now, jar now. Like, high-res sprites, pretty badass looking. It, like, I like it a lot. It does feel way more high-res than a lot of other stuff in Dominion. So I don't know if it, like, 100% fits in, but maybe this is kind of what dominion six will be is more maybe they're going to go through and get better sprites which i think would be pretty cool i mean they don't need to uh i, I love the game as it is but uh these are pretty badass um for those of you wondering because the first thing i wondered when i saw this is the new scrotty was like okay did the wolf form change did we get a badass wolf, badass wolf it's still the same old big bad werewolf that didn't change, but uh, this guy did. Uh, it would be cool to get a like a more high-res werewolf, though, because these guys are pretty badass looking. Um, all the units got changed. Uh, I'm not actually super familiar with what the... I don't know if there's major changes to like the, the Niflheim lineup in terms of the units it got. I think they're mostly the same. 
One thing now is you need to be cold too, at least to recruit these guys. Um, I have noticed you cannot recruit them in, in cold one. Um, so for this game, I forgot to do my scales, and I've had to cast Wolf and Winter on my provinces to get them. Um, we're going to go through all the nations real quick, but I, I do want to show you the Twiceborn forms, because that was one of the changes. So this is the Vetti Hag uh, in Twiceborn. So this is the Vetti Hag normally, right? And this is the Vetti Hag in Twiceborn form. So it's a pretty badass chassis, but this costs you 20 Death Gems to get. So, uh, you know, not cheap. This is what happens when you do it to a Jotun Jarl. You basically get a Tartarian. Um, very good stats. Uh, yeah, super high natural. Pro oh no, that's from that's from this. Um, but yeah, just badass. I mean, what what can we say? Yeah, pretty good. And this one I don't think is linked up. Like this doesn't look like a a Nefil Jarl. Um, so I think this is all size sixes. I think they all get big badass forms like this. Um, and this is the Scrotty. Um, they are pretty cool too. Uh, probably, I don't know. Depends. I was going to say, not as worth it as the Hag. But it could be, depending on the bless you took. Um, and then, like, here's a Vetti Hag. I did some Vetti Hags, too. And so these were only five gems, but, like, this one I had to empower in death. Um, so anyway, just to show you, this is if I cast Twiceborn with this lady, see, I have 267 death gems here. And, yeah, it went down to 247. So for her, because she's size 4, it's uh, 20 death gems. So it's expensive. Definitely something I think you want to think carefully about now. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and look at the other nations real quick. Um, we'll take a look at uh, Jotunheim. So Jotunheim changed. They got the... I think this is new. I God, I never played Jotunheim, so it totally could be this is an old unit. It very well could be. But basically, it's like a souped-up Vetti Hag. You know, this probably is an old unit. I probably like being dumb. But uh, anyway... They did get cool new sprites, so this is a pretty badass sprite for it. Um, the... Yeah. Pretty badass sprites across the board. They've got these guys. So I think this is a new unit. I definitely don't remember ever seeing one of these in the game. Um, a Therm's Hurting. And they're basically susceptible to shock, which is kind of what these guys are. I think this is... I, I'm led to believe this is a new unit. Um, susceptible to shock, which isn't a very common trait. These guys are susceptible to shock, too. Um, but they're pretty badass. Like, look at this. Ice protection and 20 protection. This is a very solid uh, cap-only sacred. And then here are these guys, the Ulfadin. They have uh, regeneration and... Do they switch forms? Yeah. Okay, so these are skin shifters. But they have uh, susceptible to shock now, which is kind of badass. These guys do not do that, right? No. Yeah, so basically they just got, on all their giants, they've got shock weakness. I don't think this was the case. Let's check real quick. I don't think this was the case for uh, Niflheim. Uh, but I think that actually has... Oh, no, it is. Okay, interesting. So these guys are all weak to shock. So, huh. Interesting. Okay, so they're all weak to shock now. And then... For Jotunheim... All these guys are weak to shock, but the mooses are not. And the goblins obviously aren't. So that is pretty interesting. I kind of like that. Kind of like it. Um, 
this Scratty, just so you remember, because we're about to look at Utgard, and their Scratty actually got changed. These are Water 2, Blood 2, and then they get one of these four randoms. We're going to pull up Utgard real quick. Utgard. Um, their Scratty are different. They're only Water 1 now. So they're a little weaker as Scratty. I don't know if this was in vanilla. I don't think so. I, are they cheaper too? 220 versus... Two fifty five, yeah, they're thirty gold cheaper. Um That's kind of a nerf though, because it means I mean kind of a significant nerf. It means they're not gonna have uh water two guaranteed I mean like water one guaranteed in their wolf form. Which you do kind of count on. So I don't think it's I think that's a nerf. I don't think it's a buff for, for Utgard. It's not like crippling, but it is a nerf. Um, and then we have Seth Kona. But Utgard is more than any nation inclined to use these guys as uh, communion batteries. They're, they don't really care about that water. Um, Jotun Hurlers. Yeah, okay, so the this is the Gam Herding sprite, which is pretty cool. <sighs> um, but yeah, anyway, uh, they have new spells too. We'll take a look at them. One of the new spells is you get, um, so, okay, well, let's, tight camera, bring my debug senseis back. Um, one of the spells is, that's new, because there's a lot of spells, uh, summon Rim Vetter, and these are basically these guys, um, and they are pretty high protection and cold, three. Uh, what cold is it to? Okay, it's cold three here. Why are they... Actually, they're not nearly as high as I thought they were. Cold power. I mean, they are size one, so you have to imagine packing a ton of these into one square. Pretty good, and they're stealthy with Chillara. It's a lot of Chillara in one square. I bet that's pretty okay. Let's wait. Let's see how much it cost. Five for five? Yeah. I could see that being an okay use of water gems. So that's that. Um, okay, what else do we have? Uh, we have Dwarf of the Four Directions. So uh, this one's kind of interesting. I've, I've had both of these dwarves out. Let's... I'll show you the dwarves first. So here they are. Um, and they're expensive to get. If you look at it, they're 60-something uh, air gems. And if you have all four of them, then Darkness and Perpetual Storm will cover the world. I don't know if it's every turn. Let's check. Okay, it is dark. It didn't happen right away either. It Yeah, it's got snow from the storm. Um it doesn't take up a global slot and it's just tied to having the four units. If you kill one of them, they're immortal. Uh but they'll just go back I mean they're really not immortal. They they're unique. So they'll go back into the pool and then you can summon them again. But uh, this will only happen when they're four, and they have to be around for a while. Uh, in my experience, it was like eight turns or something before it happened. But then it's like every turn, you basically are going to have constant darkness, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Constant darkness. So that uh, is basically how... The dwarves work, and they're of course pretty damn useful uh, dudes. They're master smiths, which is pretty nice, and they have pretty good paths. So they're pretty useful. You're going to be conflicted about do you use them in combat, or um, where you may lose darkness. It doesn't affect income, so I say that. Why is my income so shit though?
Do I have people here, like, eating? Okay, let's kill one of these off. And we'll see if it... This should get rid of it. Uh Okay. Wait, so that event's going to happen in 3 turns? They they're supposed to have gone back up in the sky to do their job. Okay, so it took a while. There's like a, it's, I don't know why. It's kind of funky, but it took a while. Apparently they're back up in the sky now and they're doing their job. So now when I attack, we shouldn't see darkness. Yeah, okay. And there's no storm. So that is indeed kind of how it works. There's like a weird lag with it though. Um... But yeah, those are the dwarves. And I think, I think, oh, there's, there's one other one. One second, we need to find it. It was Winner's Call or something like that. One second, let's see what it was called here. Um, Winter's Call. I feel like Winter's Call, we're going to have to figure out where it is. I kind of prepared for this video, and then... Apparently I missed some stuff. Oh, here it is. Oh, cool. So this you can only do if you have Illwinter up. Um, let's see if they, they cost upkeep real quick. I want to see. Let's see who else has it, too. Create Pretender God. Let's see if Jotunheim has it. Wait, does did I miss it? And does um, Niflheim have it too? No, Niflheim does not have it because they've got Niflheim Charles. Okay, so real quick, we're gonna have to make a quick test game. We're gonna see how this works. So arena, let's not delete our old one. Late age, we'll do Utgard. And one second, I'm just gonna make sure I don't get attacked by the AI real quick. Gold. I'm gonna pause it for you guys. Okay, so I've got it done. Uh, it doesn't actually work on uh, Utgard. Uh, it only works on Vettiheim and Jotunheim, I think. Um, but yeah, they do have gold upkeep. You just get like the normal EA Naple Jar, it, appear it appears. Uh, the mod inspector I don't think has been updated yet. So anyway, still cool. Uh, definitely something I think you still want to do. But spending blood slaves to get somebody that costs upkeep, um, you'll want to get some of them. But I don't think you want to spam it. I don't think. Maybe you do. I don't know. Depends. Um, but yeah, that's what it's called for you. So anyway, I think we've gone through all the nations. Oh, we haven't really done uh, Vettiheim. Uh, so this is Vettiheim. 
Uh, they basically have, let's pull up the national screen here. Um, they have uh, an assassin here that has a dusk dagger built in, which is very good, and a poison dagger. So uh, I could see this getting a fair amount of play. Uh, then they've got the Vedi Gaija, which is basically a Gaija, uh, but on a little shitty scout. Uh, you're basically going to get going to get two in one of these paths, uh, and then you have a chance for a oh no, which one do you not get? Oh, two in one of these paths with a chance for astral or blood, uh, or a chance for astral and blood. So uh, you basically one. Like, almost half of them are going to be able to enter a communion, either through being a Sabbath slave or a, a communion slave or master. Um, the other ones will be situationally useful. Pretty expensive, though. But they're sacred and they're stealthy. So um, Then you have a normal Go uh, Jotun Gaija. Um, and then they have better paths by bit. Different paths, too. Uh, they have built-in blood, so all these guys are able to enter communions. And then um, you have the Vetti Hag, which um, they get basically these same randoms that we were looking at before, but they have no base paths. Um, but they're super cheap. These are one of the cheapest mages in the game. Um, and they're pretty useful. Almost all these can do something. The water ones can do stuff, like Frozen Heart Spam. The Astral ones can do stuff. Communion Slaves Masters, the Death Ones can make Skeletons, the Nature Ones can buff up troops, Blood One Mages are always useful. I think these are pretty solid units. Um, and then the Assassin's cool. You have uh, the Vedi Jode, which is basically a Nature One guy, which actually is pretty useful because they can, you can take in a bunch of Vedi, which are pretty small, and because they're so small and stealthy, this guy is going to be able to put protection on a good number of them. So uh, I think this is a pretty solid unit. And he also has summon allies. And I think, let's check real quick. Yeah, you get wolves. So, I mean, kind of worth it. If you if you do pack of wolves, it's basically two gems and you get ten. So, I mean, kind of worth it. It's not going to be nearly as good, in my opinion, as, like, the, the wolf herd from Ulm. Because, I mean, A, it's a good bit more expensive. B, it's more recruitment points. But I don't think, so I don't know, when you're mostly done researching, there's probably a decent use for any of these guys that you've built up. I think they're mostly useful as raiders. Um, you have size one crossbows, super good. Uh, they take buffs really well. <coughs> buffs really well, sorry. Um, you have this guy, a size one guy carrying a 21 damage battle axe that goes berserk. Yeah. That's some scary shit. And then you have this guy, if you're dealing with more crossbows. Stealthy, shield, broadsword, size one, pretty good. Pretty cool nations, basically like a size one nation. And then you have these guys, the wolf riders, who are pretty solid. Um, you get the moose nut, or the moose riders, which have crossbow and shortbow. And then you get these guys, cap only sacreds. And uh, they have a chill aura, and then ice protection with pretty high base it's ice protection too. So you're going to be basically up at protection uh, 20 and cold 3. And then they have a magic weapon. So this is going to be, potentially if you take like a killy bless, these guys would be very hard to deal with. Um, there's probably a lot of different bless options for these guys. I don't think you want to go like super hard into a bless for them, but pretty good. Um, and then Jotun Hurlers and Jotun Axemen. So all in all, I would say pretty damn cool nation. 
Um, and then they get, you know, Ill Winter and all the other stuff that, uh, I, I don't know if they have any other particularly, uh, noteworthy spells. I'm not going to sit here and look through everything, but I mean, they also have the dwarves, like all the other, I think they have basically the Jotun spell line. Uh, but seems strong to me. Uh, anyways, very cool patch. Uh, I love the artwork update. Very cool. Um, and then I like I like pretty much all the changes they made. So uh, thanks to the devs for continuing to work on this wonderful game. And thank you to you all for watching. Cheers.